Hello YouTubers, Tommy here from Overland Transportation System with my latest update on the O-Gage Up or Down Mountain. So let's turn the camera around and we'll get to it. Okay folks, uh, as you can see from the last video, I've got um, sky painted blue, got clouds in the sky, and I've painted my landscape around the room, got all my shelf brackets up, and uh, just prior to buying and cutting my plywood, I decided to cut some uh, blue foam board and put it up in the air to get an idea of how my measurements were actually going to work out. And it looks like I'm going to once again have to make some compromises and backpedal my original plan, which is a little unfortunate. But let me go to the track plans and show you what I speak of. Then we'll come back up on the ceiling and we'll, we'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is uh, the final track plan that I had decided on, which I titled uh, Upper Down Mountain which was a play on words in that you would uh, put your cars and trains, load them up down here somewhere in a neighborhood of 42 inches off the floor, and they would traverse around this mountain, which was uh, six feet wide, 13 feet long, in a series of loops and figure eights, and would eventually come up here to the, up the ceiling level, uh, come on to the main line, and it would travel around in this direction. And then at this point here, you could take an 060 switch and end up going in the same direction on the inner loop. And then you could send up your second train and you could come into this siding here. You could drop your caboose. Uh, you could drop your caboose here. Got an a electromagnet. Pull your train forward, unhook your locomotive from the rest of your train, come out onto the main, back on down, grab your caboose, put it here on the main, come back into the siding, grab the rest of your train, come on here, back up, grab your caboose, and now your second train would be running in the opposite direction, and it would be going in the correct direction to come back down the mountain. That was the original plan. And I really like the idea of being able to run two trains. Um, that was suggested to me that that would be much more interesting than just running one around the ceiling. And I like the idea that I would actually be turning the train to come back down the mountain, not have to back down. So I took uh, and got my measurements for the width of what uh, my plywood was going to have to be. And here we have like a 20 inch here. We got a 19 here. Uh, these corners, you're talking 31, uh, 32 from the corner out. So I decided to take some foam board and put it up in the ceiling and see what those measurements were. Well, sadly, once I did, what I found out was uh, that the foam uh, in the measurement of the plywood basically was going to completely uh, block out my painted scenery and you would never see the inner train running around the uh, angle uh, for viewing from the floor is going to block it right out so I went back to the drawing board and what I decided was let's see if I can make some modifications so instead of running uh, the two tracks around let me see if I can run one train around still have a uh, passing siding to turn my train and over here have uh, a switch and uh, cut the plywood in the center so this makes uh, uh, incline decline from 82 inches 78 75 down to 70 and it would just keep traversing around and around giving me uh, about a six and a half uh, distance between the two tracks as they cross over one another. So that is my hope at this point. Uh, but uh, I'm going to have to shrink these measurements some. And I did find out 
that uh, the measurements that I have here from say to my wall to my to the track is much wider than I really need. Here I thought I was going to need uh, four inches from the wall to the edge of the track. Well, that's not the case. I can go uh, just two and a half inches and not scuff the wall. So uh, I've shrunk the measurements down and here we have a, the plan of just one track going around. Uh, you can see the, the old measurements here and I found out that uh, I can run uh, a six and a half wide uh, board for one train which you can see right here. So a six and a half inch wide baseboard, you can see one train just fine and the landscape. Taking that measurement uh, and running the two tracks side by side, turn around here, let me try not to get the light into the camera lens. Yes, take you an amusement right here, sorry about that. Okay, from across the room here, Trying to avoid the light from the ceiling fan getting into the camera view. Okay, so now with the updated measurement for that passing siding, uh, you can see the inner track, although you're only looking at about oh, maybe two-thirds of the car on the inner track. Uh, you can still see plenty of mountain, and I still have uh, plenty of clearance from the wall in between the two tracks providing uh, I, what switch I'm going to be able to use for the passing siding. I put a, a note out this morning on the O-Gage forum for uh, what, what uh, switches are most guys using for passing sidings. Uh, right now I'm looking at an O-72, uh, but being brand new in O, not knowing anything about this scale, uh, I'm really... Uh, unknowledgeable in all aspects of, of this scale. So I got a call out and I know a lot of guys are real good about getting back to you. Very, very helpful for them. So uh, depending on what uh, switch I need, uh, if I can do the 072, that seems like that's going to give me the closest uh, passing siding uh, to the main. And if so, I might possibly still be able to do uh, this layout here for the simple reason that uh, this this will get tightened up a whole bunch uh, and when I take my plywood and my saber saw and cut down through here to make that drop that will go down uh, and not interfere with the overall width of the shelf and block out the inner track. So that, uh, that's where I am now, and I suppose there's nothing hindering me from putting some sort of a riser underneath this track to bring it up from the plywood so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I just want to be careful, again, how much of this scenery I, I block out because I really like uh, the scenery that I painted. I don't want to lose it. And as you can see here, from the original uh, size of the plywood that I had anticipated using, you can see the dilemma. Uh, it completely blocks out everything. And it's not like you're going to be able to like get a good viewing angle from a distance away because this entire end scale here in the center of the room is going to be the mountain. And it's going to be like 60 inches tall. Uh, and so you're going to get blocked out uh, looking at the scenery and, and the layout from the other side of the room because the mountain's going to be in your face. All right. So with that, I'm going to cut this off now. And my next update will be uh, on what I finally decided on what I'm going to have to do to pull everything off. So I thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll catch you later. Bye-bye.